Well, I got some fun stuff done and some technical stuff done lately. What's this? Yeah, reopen it. I crashed it last time. It's always asking me about reopening. Well, so here's the fun stuff. I got the ghost sword so that it flies above the ground. And also the top hat flies above the ground as well and has a nice little floating bit to it. And then also when you see the top hat gets to its the edge of the screen, there you go. It's got a light on it as well. So uh, I fixed up the lights, how they how they work with uh, dynamic lights. So an entity that can be, I mean, an entity that's dynamic that, for example, can be deleted can also have, um, can also add to the lights and remove from the lights. And then uh, the last thing is, as you see when I'm standing on this hill right here, if I shoot off a ghost sword, it flies at the same Z level. So you can see that because I'm on a, on a, some stairs right now. I'm, this is a slope. And you can see that the ghost sword travels like at the same Z height. Same thing with the uh, the boomerang. It's a little bit confusing with this other guy right here. Let's get him just killed. There we go. Ah, oh, it's victory. Okay, wait, let's close it. But anyways, uh, so you get the point, right? The ghost sword is at the proper Z height, and it's not affected by gravity. Same thing with the top hat. Or the boomerang. It's actually going to be converted into a boomerang for this game. Um, so, and then also there's a lot of underlying work which I've changed which has really um, increased my confidence in how I use vectors. V vectors of three um, values like a position or a velocity, you know, something like that. Three dimensional vectors. Um, and let's take a look, a detailed look at that. What's going on with uh, V3? Um, my whole point of writing of this V3 class is to be able to represent a position or um, or a heading, you know, like an actual vector with just integers. So before I had this as int x, y, z, but now there's a final variable called unit. And that's what really makes this whole class a lot more rock solid. I was fumbling over using it all the time because it didn't have this unit variable. So sometimes I would have it um, a a variable that represented an integer as a V3 with just with just basically three integer values as its components. And then also I can represent a float um, with all the integers multiplied by a thousand. So when you want to go and you get out, if you've got one that is a float and you want it to be a, as a float, um, you can just you just divide the variables by a thousand to get the their actual floating point value. Let's take a look at that inside the the uh, the constructor and all that of V3. Um, when you construct an, uh, um, a blank V3, it uses the default unit value of a thousand. And when you construct a V3 with just pure integers, it's going to use the unit value of one. So, um, and then when you convert to float, you're multiplying by a thousand. And when you convert to integer, you're also you're dividing by a thousand, and uh, and it's also updating the unit. Whenever you do that, those conversions like two in two float, um, it updates those, and um, and then the last thing about that, is what I was just thinking, I was going to mention, what was I thinking? Shoot. But anyways, I lost my train of thought there, but. Um, the point is that the unit value can change and what that means oh that's what I remember I was gonna say is it can compare unit versus a right hand value so when you do something like operator plus equals it can compare the unit of this vector 3 with the unit of that vector 3 and make sure they're the same because otherwise it doesn't make sense to add them together and this is something I was missing before and this is why I was always fumbling with the math with v3s even though I, I know I want to have an integer based vector 3 because of multiplayer, I should mention that multiplayer, um, it gets really difficult to share your floating point values amongst clients when you're in cross platform environment because um, one platform handles floating points a little bit differently than another. Um, I'm talking about Mac, iOS is a little bit different, Windows is different, Linux, shoot. PlayStation, Xbox, all of these are different platforms that might be handling floating points in a different way. So that's why I want to use this integer-based math for all of my uh, my uh, vectors 
whenever possible. So th the important things like a position of an entity or the current velocity of an entity, all these are going to be represented by V3s. And so plus equals and minus equals can be asserted to make sure they're the same unit. And so I'm doing all my math correctly, right? I'm not multiplying an integer based vector three by a floating point or whatever. Um, and then uh, times equals doesn't really, all, all, all it needs to do is assert that the unit is greater than one um, because you want to, when you're multiplying, you want it to be times a floating point value. And then divided by equals, um, also has it uses the right hand unit as well so but anyways there's some there's some important stuff going on here to assert that units are you being used correctly there's one last thing that I'll show you when I actually debug this is pretty cool um, with this game Wraithbinder I've really learned I've upgraded my whole debugging world um, it's like I can see I've, I've, I've learned how to basically take a uh, like for example, E is a, is in my own class called an ent, which represents all the components for an entity. And um, right here, you're seeing a quick like display, a description of what that E is. This is energy en uh, entity um, ID number two, and this is the name of it is player one dash human. Right. This is a custom string which is outputted by LDB when I'm when I want to view an E. Um, I'm doing a similar thing here for the V3s, right? The V3, this is the actual variables of this V3. This is the P, the position of the camera that we're updating. And um, you can see that the summary string shows it as 672, 157, 122, and then an F showing that it's actually the floating point unit of 1,000. And then you can see these variables are stored multiplied by 1,000 right here. So if we wanted to get back the floating point value, all we've got to do is divide this 157412, divided by 1,000, you get 157.412. So, um, so, that, so let's look at like how that actually works with LLDB. This is pretty cool, um, a, a sweet way to upgrade your debugging. Um, basically, I've got all these summary strings for for different classes, right? And here's V3s. It's pretty. It's pretty special because it has to actually do its own Python scripting. But if you have just simpler classes, like Vec3 is something that represents X, Y, Z as just floating point values. So it's really, really simple. All you got to do is just um, do this whole string here called type summary add Vec3 dash dash summary string, and then you specify your summary string to go with it. So you can look up this. Um, online, I forget what the page name is, but if you look up LLDB, I think it's called Synth Providers or LLDB Summary Strings, you'll come across the page that LLDB has that des that describes their how all this works. But uh, in essence, these are these are Python scripts that can be run, and this actually grabs the unit variable for the V3, and then makes sure it's at least one, and then goes and describes all gets the X value and the y value and the z value divides it by unit and then goes and returns a string uh, representing all those right here's x stripped of its its right zeros and then y stripped of its right zeros z stripped of its right zeros and then the unit right this is how it all that works so that we get inside xcode when we're using lodb to debug We've got this uh, variable here, nice and neat. It's so easy to see at a glance what that variable is and what, what it represents and what the dangers might be of using it, right? Hey, we gotta make sure we're multiplying this P by an, an also an F, right? A floating point based V3. So that's why right here, we're projecting this at P, right? As a floating point variable, it's still a floating point here. Let's like, let's close this. So we're just looking at this summary string right here. Now we're gonna do two int. And it's going to be, now we got an I on the right hand por portion of the summary string representing the unit of one. And we've got X, Y, and Z as simple integer based values there. And then, so th there you go. And then we can, we can actually do the plus equals successfully here because we got the same unit, right? This is an I, that's an I, they can be added together. So what, what all this is really doing is just, it just made it a lot less fumbly for me to use as a programmer to use my V3s. It was, this was bugging the heck out of me for months. I was always like, man, I don't know whether my V3s are an integer based or they're floating point base, based. And I, it was always bugging me. Like, I just need to be more rock solid because I'm writing a whole game here. This has got to be good, right? I need to be able to s just smoothly and effortlessly use this V3 class. And and to, re to I mean, the whole reason I'm doing an integer based 
uh, vector is just because of the multiplayer, making it si simple to share values between clients. Integer-based values are, are just, they're, they're universal. Whatever platform you're on, an integer-based value is an integer-based value. Floating point value is a little bit different, though. So that's the whole reason of doing it. Um, it will. What it will do is it will make my life a lot easier when it comes to the real-time multiplayer part of this game. Um, it will be he <laughs> hell of a lot easier. A lot less desyncs, a lot less problems, a lot less bugs to solve because I'm just using simple integer-based math. So there you have it. Another video in the Wraith Binder series. Thanks for watching this, and we'll catch you next time, huh?